Namaste. Welcome to this global online Ramila festival. It's the first of its kind in the world. It's going to bring together countries from around the world to perform Ramlila, this Ram Katha, as uh, told in two styles. You will see the dramatic theatrical style or the Natya Dharmi style, and then you'll see the Loka Dharmi style, Maidani, in the open air. Um, the last one is, is a kind of very old uh, style of performing that's still present in countries like Trinidad, um, Suriname and Fiji, and in many parts of North India. So this is the first of its kind in the world. And because of the uh, COVID-19, um, many places will be unable to perform the Leela as they normally do. So Ayodhya Research Institute has decided to put together videos from the different parts of the world where they perform the Ram Leela and to showcase for you the different styles. Um, the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts will also be joining with the Yodhya Research Institute in sharing their archives of different performances that they have recorded across India, Southeast Asia, and even Russia. So I invite you to enjoy this festival for nearly 30 days. Ramayan Satkot Yapara Ramayan Kitane Rupo Me Kaha Kaise विस्तारित है अयोध्या शोध संस्थान से शोध करते हुए जो निष्कर्ष मिल रहे हैं वो अत्यंत आश्चर्यजनक हैं कलिंग युद्ध के बाद पहली बार भारतीय संस्कृति का माइग्रेशन दूसरे देशों में हुआ अगर आप भारत के नक्शे को ध्यान से देखें तो जो पूर्वी तट है हमारा उड़ीसा तमिल और आंध्र प्रदेश पश्चिम बंगाल वहां से जो कला हमारी कलिंग युद्ध के बाद 200-300 ईसवी पूर्व से जो विस्तार हुआ तो साउथ ईस्ट एशिया में वो सारे कला रूप हमें मिलते हैं भारत के हर राज्य में हर भाषा में रामेवा का आयोजन होता है और दुनिया के अंदर भी लगभग हर भाषा में हर देश के अंदर रामलीला का मंचन किसी न किसी रूप में होता है राम सब जगह है राम सबके इसलिए राम भारत की अनेकता में एक के सूत्र साथियों दुनिया कितने ही देश राम के नाम का वंदन करते हैं वहां के नागरिक खुद को श्री राम से जुड़ा हुआ विश्व की सर्वाधिक मुस्लिम जनसंख्या जिस देश में है वो है इंडोनेशिया वहां हमारे देश की तरह काकानी रामायण स्वर्ण दीप रामायण योगेश्वर रामायण जैसे कई अनूठी रामायण राम आज भी वहां पूजनीय है कंबोडिया में रमकेर रामायण है लाओ में तालाब तालाब रामायण है मलेशिया में हिकायत से भी राम तो थाईलैंड में रामा केन है आपको ईरान और चीन में भी राम के प्रसंग तथा राम कथाओं का विवरण और प्रस्ताव करने के बाद एक दिन रावण की बहन शूरपंखा लक्ष्मण को बहकाने की असफल कोशिश में अपना नाक कटवाती है और शीघ्र ही अपने भाई रावण को सारी व्यथा सुनाकर श्री राम और लक्ष्मण को बैरी बनाने में 
सफलता प्राप्त करती है रावण स्वर्ग मेघ के रूप में मायावी को भेजकर श्री राम और लक्ष्मण को वन में सीता की कुटिया से दूर भेजकर स्वयं एक साधु के रूप में एक साधु के रूप में आकर सीता का अपहरण करता है श्री राम और लक्ष्मण लौटने पर खाली कुटिया पाकर अत्यंत दुखित दशा में सीता की खोज में निकल पड़ते हैं बहुत दूर चलते चलते वे एक जगह माता शबरी से आ मिलते हैं Toen Sri Ram en Lakshman al in het bos waren, heeft de zus van Ravan, Shrupnakha, geprobeerd om Lakshman af te leiden, maar helaas zonder succes. En in tegendeel werd haar neus eraf gehaald. Toen Shrupnakha, de zus van Ravan, dit aan haar broer vertelde, werden Ram en Lakshman als schuldige gezien. Ravan besloot toen om revenge, om wraak te nemen. En stuurde Mayavi in de vorm van een prachtige hert, zodat Sita Ji dit zou zien en Ram en Lakshman achter het hert zou sturen. En daarna kon Ravan Sita meenemen. Dit gebeurde ook. Toen de twee broers terugkwamen, zagen ze Sita niet meer en werden heel onrustig. Gingen op zoek naar Sita en kwamen Mata Shubri tegen. राजा दशरथ के पुत्र है यह है मेरा छोटा भाई लक्ष्मण और मैं राम प्रभु प्रभु मेरे प्रभु श्री राम देखिए देखिए मेरे प्रभु श्री राम मेरे प्रभु प्रभु प्रणाम प्रभु प्रणाम प्रभु 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 कितने दिनों से आप जी रात देख रही थी प्रभु 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 आइए आइए की कुटिया में आपका आपका स्वागत है प्रभु आइए प्रभु आइए मेरे प्रभु श्री राम मेरे प्रभु श्री राम आगे प्रभु चबरी की कुटिया में आपका आपका स्वागत है प्रभु आइए प्रभु आसन में रख दीजिए प्रभु लो, तुम भी खाओ। मैं आपके लिए 
झूठे हैं भैया इसे कैसे खा सकता हूं लक्ष्मण इस संसार में प्रेम से बढ़कर और कुछ नहीं होता है फल जूठे हैं तो क्या हुआ इनकी मिठास ऐसी है कि उनका वर्णन करने के लिए मेरे पास तो शब्द ही नहीं है माँ के आपके हाथों फल काकर ऐसा लग रहा जैसे स्वयं कौशल्या हमें खिला रही है माते यदि मेरी सीता का कोई समाचार हो तो कृपया बताए प्रभु आप पर्वत पर जाइए वहां पर वानर आज सुगरे रहते हैं वो आपके मंत्रियों के साथ और हनुमान के साथ आपको सीता की खोज में आपको मदद करेंगे प्रभु उनसे मित्रता कीजिए प्रभु वो सीता देवी सीता को खोजने में आपकी मदद करेंगे प्रभु धन्यवाद हो माते आपका यह उपकार हम जीवन भर नहीं भूलेंगे जो आपने हमारा यह मार्गदर्शन कराया आप धन्य है माते Now devotees there lived a woman by the name of Shabari She was a great bhakta of Shri Hari She had been preparing and waiting every day for his arrival Shabari had faith that the words of her guru would come to pass one day Her devotion had deepened with every passing day She was now elderly but she never wavered in her bhakti. Devotees, can you see her preparing as she has always done? Today, the two brothers are approaching her kutia. Shabari can see them in the distance and she instantly recognizes her Prabhu. She rushes towards him and falls at his feet. She is bowing again and again. With her tears, she washes the feet of Sri Ram. Such is her bhakti that words themselves cannot suffice. She is taking Sri Ram and Vid Lakshman inside the kutia. and she is offering them a sacred seat devotees now She is offering Prabhu the sweetest and the best fruits that she has picked by first tasting them herself. Shri Ram lovingly partakes of the offerings and she surrenders totally to him as he imparts the nine forms of devotion to her.
Shabari is in a state of total surrender. With clasped hands and a bowed head. This meeting of Bhakta and Bhagwan is beautiful beyond words. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. A Shri Ram and Lakshman journeys to the forest lands. They approach the rich Yamuk hills where live King Sugri with his counselors. And when he saw the two brothers, he became very disturbed at heart. And so he called on his chief minister, Hanumanji, and he said, Hanuman? Hey, Hanuman, Jali, Oh, come quickly. Look down the distance. I'm seeing two warriors, two chatriyas, they are approaching. Disguise yourself in the form of a Brahman and find out why they are here. Probably it's Bali who sent them. Find out their purpose. Why they are here in the forest. And give me a signal so I know whether it is safe or not. he bows and he says who are you heroes one dark and the other fear come roam this woods in disguise as brahmins treading the hard ground with your soft tender feet why are you wandering in the forest O master Thou possesses this beautiful limbs. That behold, it is that you have exposed yourself to this harsh sun and wind. Are you two of the three gods, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva? Or are you Nar and Narayan? Shri Ram listened to the words of Hanumanji and the all merciful Lord smiles as he responds to Hanuman. Hey Brahmin, you seem wise. Your questions are very, very definitive. You want to know who we are and why are we here? We are in search of Sugriv, King Sugriv. We have wood that he lives on the mountain. How can you reach it? She was the party. Who are you in disguise? Who are you? So Sri Ram, he responds by saying that his name is Ram. I am Ram. This is my brother Lakshman. We are from Ayodhya, sons of Dasara. We are in search of my wife Sita. Master. It is fitting for me to inquire, but why should you ask, as though you were a mere man? I have been wondering, either under the influence of your elusive powers, and that is why I feel it is I feel to recognize You are my Lord. In the first place, I am dull-witted and elusive. Please 
reservoir of heart and ignorance. And then you too may bless me, Lord, friends of the humble. Forget me, I swear, O Raghuvir, I know no, I know no devotional song, nor any other means of please praising you, Prabhu. And so now Hanumanji recognizing his Lord, he removed his disguise and he fell to the feet of the Lord Shira, asking the Lord to forgive him for not recognizing him. Now Hanumanji, he carries Shiram and Lakshman to King Sugriv Raja. He carries Sri Ram and Lakshman in the Rishyamuk hills to meet with Sugriv. Sugriv bows to the feet of Bhagwan Ram. We are searching the forest lands for my wife, Devi Sita. She has been carried away by a terrible demon. It's so great hearing the words of Bhagwan Ram, his eyes filled with tears. Sri Ram, knowing your plight, you are welcome to stay with us as long as it takes. And Sri Ram, I vow that together with all my warriors, I will help you in the search for Mother Sita. Sri Ram, it is with this vow that I take that I will help you to find her no matter where she may be. Okay. I regard you as King Sukri. But why are you here in the hills? Sridham, that's a long story a very long time ago the son of the demon king mayavi he came to kishkinda gate late in the middle of the night and he called out bali With his ferocious voice, he called Bali again and again. And knowing Bali, knowing Bali not to stand down from any challenge, Shidam Bali rushed out at Mayavi. And with that, Mayavi ran far away. Bali did not stop. Bali went with him. I followed after. I followed both of them. Mayavi took refuge in a cave. He went and hide in a cave. Bali seen me around closely behind. He waited until I arrived. And he said to me to wait at the entrance of this cave for a fortnight. And if he should not return, then count him as being killed by Mayavi. It so happened, Sri Ram, that I waited for a month. 
a little more than a month. Then one evening, a stream of blood came out of the cave. No sound was heard, just a rush of blood. At that time, I became really frightened. I thought my AV had destroyed Bali. And so, I took a huge rock, a huge boulder, and placed it at the entrance of the cave so that no one may enter or come out of the cave. And I returned to Kishkinda. When I returned to Kishkinda, the ministers there realized that they needed a king to rule over Kishkinda. And they forced me as king of Kishkinda. They forced me to accept that role of king. Later on, Bali returned to my surprise. And with his ignorance and arrogance, he thought that I wanted the kingdom of Kishkinda. And there we fought. And we fought and he beat me repeatedly over and over. Took all my possessions. Left me with nothing. Wife, children, everything. He made claim to everything. And he chased me out, Ishkinda. And now, I reside on the hill. Here I am safe because Bali was given a strap that he cannot enter the mountain where his head will spill in two. So for the moment I am safe here. Chiram, that's the reason why I reside in the mountain now. Hey friend, a great injustice has been done. Did you explain to Bali? What? Bali is no one to be reasoned with. He does not understand logic and reasoning. He is very powerful. And with that, and with his arrogance combined, no one can really attack him and become successful. So, Bali resides at Kishkinda as the king. And I, Shiram, resides in the mountain top here, where I am safe and free from one. Shiram is filled with great pity hearing the story of Marat Sugri. Here, friend, King Sugri. I will help you anywhere I can. How oh, may I of assistance to you? Just then while they were having this conversation, one of the Vangaras remembered something and handed it to Sukhreef. Shreda, some time ago, up in the heavenly regions, some crying and wailing was heard. And this jewelry fell on my lap, Shiram. Yes. This is Sita's heifer. I recognize this. Shiram, I have no idea whose it is. But possibly it is hers. Sugri was wondering in his mind how difficult it must be to kill Bali. 
And can Shriram really kill the destroy Bali? Is he really the Lord? So he thinks of a way to test the might of Bhagavan Ram. Shriram, I have a little doubt in my heart, in my mind. And to clear that doubt, I need for you to do one thing for me. There are seven palm trees that grow down in this way. And it is said that the one who can uproot all seven palm trees at the same time, that is the one who will have the power and the will and the might to destroy Bali. So Sridham, to clear the doubt of my mind, I wish that you can prove yourself and uproot all seven palm trees at the same time. Hey Subhri, let not doubt enter your mind and heart. Take me to the trees. So Subhri takes Bhagwan Ram, Bhutangat, Hanumanji, Lakshman, a few powerful soldiers to that spot where the seven trees were. Watch out. At the base of the tree, there lies the bones of Dundabi. And here, here, Shriram, those are the seven palm trees that I've been talking about. And if you can with a single arrow uproot all seven palm trees, Shriram, the doubt in my mind, in my heart, will be clear. And so with a single arrow, Shiram. Shiram, at this time, my mind recollects that Bali has a special boon. That in battle, whosoever he faces, he acquires half of their strength. It matters not who his opponent is. So long as you face him in battle, Sri Ram, he will acquire half of your strength. And together with his, he becomes invincible. And that's why he is so difficult to defeat. Sugriva Pathava 
घर जैसे जाइनी कट बल पारा सुनत बारी क्रोध तूर धावा गही कर चरण नाड़ी समझावा सुश्राम सेन सुग्री तो चालक जवाली ओके सुग्री गुड बाली एंड इस यू अ चैलेंज Bali shall surely meet as much and his maker. And so bowing to the feet of Bhagwan Ram, Sugriv journeys to Kishkinda. Raja. Together with Shri Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman, and Angad, where Shri Ram will hide behind a tree and look on. Listen, my lord. The two brothers whom Subriva has made alliance with are of unapproachable majesty and might. They are no other than Ram and Lakshman, and the sons of King Dashrath, who can conquer death himself. in battle you know long i met him for two weeks ah the devil will destroy the devil will kill you tara and tara holds on to the feet of bali and begs him to stay behind bali my lord please do not go into battle with your brother And so Bali, not heeding the advice of Tara, he enters, and a terrible fight began between Bali and Sugri.
All the line of Sri Ram was looking on from behind the tree in an effort to shoot Bali. But it was difficult to tell the both brothers apart. Meanwhile, Sugriv was receiving extreme blows at the hands of Bali. I could not recognize you from Bali. Both of you are equal in looks. Forgive me. Bali is too powerful. So brief. I place this mall on you. Today, Bali will finally meet his end. Go back to the battlefield one more time. I assure you, Bali will be destroyed. Jogya, Shira. And so, upon blessing Sugriv, all of his pains disappeared. And we will now witness Sugriv entering once again back into battle, calling out to Bali in the city of Kishkinda, Bacha. So Bali paying no heed to Tara, he enters the battlefield. Baja.
Walszy rąk doktor, przyjechany czy... Shiram reminds Bali of his sinful actions. Bali, you are a great boon to the righteousness. When Shri explained everything to you, he did not listen. You beat him, drew him out of his kingdom, took his kingdom, took his gifts. Bali, listen, Rama. My captainess cannot avail against the Lord like you, but I am still a sinner, Lord. Even though I have found shelter in you in my last hour. And so he begged the Lord to pity and forgive him. He asked the Lord to grant him a boon. In his last moments, Bali would have asked Bhagwan to grant him a boon. He says, Lord, look upon me with compassion and grant me the boon that I ask for whatever the womb in which I am fated to be born. May I be devoted to Rama's feet, O Lord. My son Angad is humble and strong. Angad? Oh my son, Angad! Angad is humble and strong like myself. Accept him and make him your own servant.
And so the Lord, He listened to the words of Bali. And He blessed Angad. Just then, keeping the image of Sri Ram in his heart, Bali dropped his body without knowing it. As little as an elephant will recognize the garland falling from its neck, Bali departed from this world. Tara, hearing the news of her husband's death, Baja, Tara enters the scene, Baja. discomfort and pain and suffering. Having a trembling body, she looked at her husband's body lying on the ground and seeing her in distress, Sri Ram, he approaches Tara. And he begins to speak words of wisdom to her, imparting great knowledge to her about the present situation. Go oh, Queen. Fear not. Do not weep. Angad, your son, is the rightful prince of Kishkinna. Give wisdom to him. To Bali Hathya Moksha. Sri Ram instructs us to grieve to make arrangements for the cremation rights of his brother. Okay. Arrange the funeral for your brother. He was a great warrior indeed. Give him a warrior sandal. And so to grieve, he makes preparations for the cremation. So Lakshman summoned the citizens of, the of Kishkinda, the Brahmins, and in their presence, they performed the final rites. At the end of performing the funeral services of Bali, Sri Ram, he turns to Lakshman and he says, Lakshman, summon the citizens of, Ayodhya, of uh, Kishkinda, the Brahmins are in their presence installed to grief as the new king of Kishkinda and Angad as Yuvraj, the prince of Ayodhya. And so Lakshman, bowing reverently to the feet of his brother Shiram, he proceeds to do so. Baja.
So Lakshman immediately summoning the citizens and the Brahmins of Kishkinda and in their presence he crowns Sugriv as the new king of Kishkinda. And they also installed Angad as the crown prince of Ayodhya. And so after being crowned, the new king of Kishkinda, and Angad becoming the crown prince of Kishkinda, they all journeyed back to Sri Ram, Baja. <laughs> and so the Lord, he then instructed Sugriv on various principles of kingship. To Sri Ram, he said, Sugriv, I have given my word Sugriv, now you are a king of Kishkinda. I have given you my word. I will help you stop this in getting the kingdom back. You must rule with an honest mind and a clean heart. Sugriv. Yes, we have. With your blessings. Your might, your devotion, and your guidance. Definitely, Kishkinda will rise to great glories. I vow that I will rule with honesty, with respect, with honor, and most of all, devotion and the dust of your feet. And so, Sugriv, bowing to the feet of Bhagavan Ram. He returns to Kishkinda with his people, where Sri Ram and Lakshman encamped and stayed at Pravarshan Hills, Baja. <laughs> Last night's Leela, Sri Ram would have sent Sugriv back to rule over Kishkinda and the Lord would have said to Sugriv, Go Sugriv, rule over the kingdom of, of Kishkinda but forever cherish my business in your mind and in your heart which means to remember me at all times and do not forget the promise that you would have made to me but after some time would have gone and the seasons would have changed Sri Ram he appeared to be in a very dull mood and so residing in, in Pravarshan Hills, the Lord he addresses Lakshman. Lakshman Daya, a very long time has passed. It seems that King Sugriv has forgotten his promise towards me. Lakshman. I have one task for you, Baya. Remind King Sugriv of that very promise that he made to me, Baya. 
Namaskar. And so Lakshman, listening to the command of Bhagwan Ram, he journeys to the city of Kishkinda, Bacha. And so Lakshmani journeys to the city of Kishkinda as he arrives. He meets with Angad along with Hanuman. And they would have greeted Lakshman with true love and carried him to Sugriv. Where is Sugriv? And so saying, Lakshman, Sugriv, Hanuman, and Angad journeys to Shriram at Pravrashan Hills, Baja. before the feet of Bhagwan Ram. Prabhu, please forgive me 
for it is with only your blessing that the material objects and the lust of the mind can be removed. Lord, it is with all your doing. It is with all your guidance that all the material objects and the attachment to them can be removed. Please forgive me, O oh Lord, for I had really forgotten my promise. Hey, Fred, Kate, you agree? I forgive you. I know that having power sometimes, everyone forgot what their purpose is. Hey, Kate. And so while this conversation with Grieve and Bhagwan Ram continued, message would have been sent to the Vanar army, Bacha. And so we will now witness multitudes of Vanars arriving. Host of monkeys of various colors could be seen on all sides. Large and small, they creep forth in groups. And on arriving there, they bowed at Sri Ram and sat down and gazed upon his face. soldiers and Sugreev he addresses the army. Oh soldiers, today we are gathered here to perform a very important and great task. We will have to search far and wide every nook and cranny of the forest and get word of where Mother Sita resides. We have to find her. And I've given you one month, just one month, to return with message of where Sita resides. Again, I'm giving you one month to return to me with that message of where Mother Sita resides. If you return by that month with no word, then all of you, every single one of you, will die at my hand. So go and find out where she resides. Look at every nook and cranny through the forest. Do not return to me without good news, or again you will die at my hand. Jao, go up quickly and bring back favorable results. At that time, Bhagwan Ram, he looks at Hanumanji, and the Lord, he approached Hanuman. And he said to Hanumanji, Hanuman, I have a most important task for you. Take this ring upon Fire Sita and give this ring to her and remind her of the incident between Jayant. I have never told anyone about this, and one, the love and devotion that you are doing, and one, I salute you. Tell her that this Ram is coming for her, wherever she is. Tell her that this Ram misses her, and he loves her, and one. Yeah. 
And so listening to the words of Bhagwan Ram, Hanumanji was filled with joy. The Ghanar army was filled with enthusiasm as well. And so bowing their heads to their kings to grieve and imprinting the image of the Lord Sri Ram in their hearts, they joyfully set out on their mission, Baja. Hope in finding Devi Sita, they gathered together and they were all very thirsty and hungry, but water could not be found anywhere, and so they have also lost their way in the dense forest. And Hanumanji talked to himself that they were without water to drink, all would die, and so Hanumanji begins a search for water, watch out.
And so, arriving there, they saw an ashram, a beautiful ashram surrounded with fruits. Some of the farmers started tasting the fruits and breaking the branches and so on. But Jamban told them, no. Let us see whose ashram is this. And there, they saw a very old woman. Jamunti approached her. Placing his hands together, he says, Mata, Mother, we are looking for Devi Sita. We are all messengers of Bhagwan Ram. And Ma, we are hungry and we are thirsty. And so the old woman fed Jamunt and Hunuman and Hunger in the army. And so she gave them water to partake of as well. So the entire army, being extremely tired, they were filled with joy to see that ashram, and more so to partake of what was given to them, food and water of course. And so much so, that being extremely tired, and after partaking of food and water, the army fell asleep. So being very tired and thirsty and having eaten and had something to drink, the army, they were all fast asleep. And after resting for a period of time, they began waking up. And opening their eyes, they saw with wonder they were now standing at the seashore. So the Vamars were all amazed to really be standing at the seashore and they questioned themselves, how is it that we would have arrived here? And realizing what had happened, they began discussing about this mystery among themselves. But while this was happening, while they were discussing as to how they would have arrived at the seashore, Sampati, the brother, the elder brother of Jatayu heard this noise from his cave on a mountain and he came out of his cave, Baja. And when he came out of his cave and saw a host of banners, he said, Ah, God has provided me with a meal today. provided me with plenty of food at the same time. And the banner horse that trembled with fear when they heard this.
very frightful to look at. And so the army trembled with fear. Sampati, he looked this way because once he and his brother Jatai was flying to meet Suryadev the sun. And when the heat took them, Jatayu retreated, but Sampati wanted to prove to Jatayu that he was superior, so he kept on going, and his wings were scorched badly, and since then he dwelt in a cave. When the army was extremely desperate, Angad, he says, Ayodhya Pati Rama Chandra Ki Jai. Angad, he turns to the army and he says, O Vanar, have no fear, for there is no one in this world so blessed as Jatayu. Jatayu who laid down his life in the service of Sri Ram. When Sampati heard this, he stopped instantly. <laughs> Angad says, So we should count ourselves fortunate if we die in service of the Lord Sri Ram. And so listening to the words of Angad, Sampati was filled with great joy and grief and he began thinking and he said who said Jatayu and why did you call that name Angad says to him Sampati Ravan took away Sita and as Ravan abducted Sita Sampati your brother Jatayu began a most terrible battle with him and Jatayu would have lost his life. Sampati is filled with sadness to hear of his brother's death. And he says, please allow me to perform the last rites of my brother. And so Sampati, he made offerings to his brother and has prayer asking God to take care of his soul. And when Sampati, he turns to the army and he says, Listen, O devotees of Shri Hari, and listen well, Sampati says, On the summit of Trikunda Hill stands the city of Lanka, and Ravan, who is a fearless, ruthless king by nature, he lives there. Sampati, he says, because I am a vulture, I can see very far. And therefore, I can see Mother Sita seated there. She is sitting in the Ashok Gardens of Lanka. She is seated beneath the Ashok tree. So therefore, devotees of Sri Ram, I will have furnished you with the information that you need to find Devi Sita. And so Sampati, he takes his leave as he goes back into his cave. Baja. Listening to the words of Sampati, 
A discussion began among themselves as would make the journey to the city of Lanka. So Angad, he says that I would be able to leap across the ocean like nothing. But I have some doubts in my mind about getting back for the distance is too far. Jamwant, he says, even though you can go, how can we send you? You are our leader. You are Yuvraj, the crown prince of Kishkinda. We cannot send you. And everyone began discussing. Nal says that he is capable of leaping 50 yojans. Neil says that he can leap 75 yojans. And they carried on like this in a discussion while Lanka resides 100 yojans away. It seems as though it was impossible for anyone to reach the city of Lanka. Meanwhile, Hanumanji, he remained very silent, seated by himself in a corner, Jammont being the wisest amongst them all. Jammont goes to Lord Hanuman and he says, Kahiri chipati suno hanuman ta ka chup sadhi rahe hu banwana ram kaaj lagi tab avatara sunata hi bhay hu pavane uma Jamunt, he says, King of the Bears, he says, he turns to Hanumanji and he says, Listen, O Hanuman, how is it that you are keeping quiet? Why is it that you are so silent? As son of the wind god, you are as strong as your father Pavandev. You are a storehouse of intelligence, O Hanumanji. Remember, Jamun says, Hanuman, it is for service to the lotus feet of Sri Ram that you have incarnated. You have left your form as Rudra, as Bhagavan Shiva, and you have now embodied yourself in this form to serve Lord Ram. Remember well, O Hanuman. In the moment Hanuman heard this, he grew to the size of a mountain with a body shining as gold and filled with splendor and bowing his head to all and taking the name of Sri Ram in his heart, he departed for the city of Lanka, Baja. He waited there for the arrival of Hanuman. A 
Hanumanji, he placed his hands together and he says, Ma, I am on a mission for my Lord Sri Ram. Please allow me to go. Please allow me to perform my service to the feet of Sri Ram and I shall return to you and I will allow you to eat me. You crafty monkey, you are trying to trick me. I shall have my meal now. Hanumanji, he listened to her and he says, Maya, I am speaking the truth. I do not lie. Please allow me to go and perform the work of my Lord. You take me for a fool? You will never return. And so Hanumanji, he tries to pass. And every time he tries to do so, Baja, Lankari, uh, Surasa would block him. And so having blessed Hanumanji, Surasa returned and Hanumanji joyfully resumed his journey, Baja.
अपी आरती श्रीरामायण जी की कीरति कलित ललित सिया पी गावत ब्रह्मादि का मुनि नारद बाल्मीका विज्ञान विशारद सुख सन कारी शेष अरुषारद बरनी पावन सुत की दीखी आरती श्रीरायण जी कलित ललित सिया पीकी गावत बेरा पुराण अष्टरस चहुशास्त्र सब गंथन को रस मुनि जन धन संतन को सरवस सार्यांश सम्मत सब ही की आरती श्री रामायण गावत संकत शंभु भवानी अरुगत संभव मुनि वे ज्ञानी व्यास आदि कवि वर्जब खानी काग भूषण गरुद के ही की आरती श्री रामायण जी की रति कले तलिया कली माल हरणी विषय रस भी की शुभ गिंगार मुक्ति युवती की दलन रोग भव मूरी अमी तात मात सब विधि तुलसी की आरती श्री रामायण कलित ललित आरती श्री रामायण जी की कीरति कलित ललित सिया पी की कीरति कलित ललित सिया पी की कीरति कलित ललित सिया पी की जय श्री राम क्लोजिंग मंत्र ओम दुर्जनो सजनो भूया सजन शांति मापदुयात शांतो मुषेत बंदेभ्यो मुक्ताश्रान्या विमोचयेत स्वस्य प्रजाभ्या परिपालयंताम न्यायेन मार्गेन महि महिषा गो ब्राह्मणेभ्या शुभमस्तु नित्यम लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु बंधु च औषधयशातिर्वनस्पते शातिर्ब्रह्मा शाति प्रेम से और जोर से विचार जयकार बोलिए गजानन स्वामी की श्री कृष्ण चंद्र भगवान की उमापति महादेव की जगदम्बे माता की पवन सुत हनुमान की सियापति राम चंद्र की गोस्वामी तुलसीदास की चुनदार और बेगो देश की बोलिए श्री सत्य सनातन धर्म की जय 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 सीताराम